Hi, I'm Jessie Scales and I've been a dancer with Sydney Dance Company for nine years. In this video, I'll be taking a look at my top five books. Much Loved is a collection of teddy bear and other stuffed animal portraits by photographer Mark Nixon. It is a trove of nostalgia, with each object obviously loved to bits over many years. There are 65 photographs accompanied by a short summary of the possession in question. Name, age, height, owner and history. I hold this book close to my heart because I too have a love to bits teddy bear. This is Harriet. She's nearly 29 and about 20 centimetres tall. I got her from my parents the day I was born and she's been with me for I would say about 80% of my life. She's been backstage with me in many theatres and has travelled to every city I've been to with Sydney Dance Company. I love teddy bears. They're the best companions who ask for nothing and give a lot back. Written by Richard Sugg, Fairies, A Dangerous History is a reflection on the nature of fairies, their representation in folklore and popular culture, and the human relationship with the fantastic. Chapters of the book look at sightings and how fairies have been portrayed in literature, paintings, and even the stage production of Peter Pan. The author says that his goal is not to claim that fairies are real, but rather to get fairies into your head, and that it does. What I love about fairies and this book is that fairies have transformed over time like no other supernatural being. From Peter Pan's Tinkerbell to being descendants of fallen angels who have the power to destroy the world, they're not always the pretty little beings that Disney would have you imagine. To quote the author Richard Sugg, time again, fairy encounters wriggle in this unsettling way across the borders of folklore and reality, mingling qualities of either that refuse to sit still in a stable category. The Vile Village belongs to a set of 13 novels written by American author Daniel Handler under the pen name Lemony Snicket. It follows the turbulent lives of three Baudelaire orphans, Violet, Sunny and Klaus. Enter the suspicious Count Olaf, who becomes their guardian, attempts to steal their inheritance and pulls off dastardly schemes with the help of his cronies. The underlying theme throughout the series is that of unity. No matter what horrific events are thrown at the children, they unite against the evil to overcome their obstacles. The Vile Village is definitely my favourite in the series. In this instalment, the Baudelaire orphans are taken into the care of an entire village, named the Village of Foul Devotees. The characters struggle through moral anxieties and temptations, eventually showing that regardless of the external situation, one always has the final choice in whether to be good or bad. To quote this book, no one knows what an idea will do when it goes off to entertain itself, particularly if the idea comes from a sinister villain. I love how even though the books are classified as children's novels, they have a mysteriously gothic feeling to them, even down to the raw edges of the book and the spindly illustrations of the characters by illustrator Brett Helquist. They also have a wickedly dark sense of humour, which is right up my alley, and so appeals even to the more mature reader. This book was published in 1996 by best-selling authors Legs McNeil and Gillian McCain. Five Years in the Making, Please Kill Me encompasses music, art culture, fashion, poetry, movies, and all the creatives in between. It begins in the mid-1960s with the birth of Velvet Underground, follows the twilight years of Andy Warhol's New York Reign, and gives a taste of Detroit and the musicians who would become MC5, The Stooges and Iggy Pop and then drifts back to New York for the emergence of the New York Dolls, the Ramones, Patti Smith, and Blondie, just to name a few. It's basically a collection of interview snippets from hundreds of people, from artists to photographers, to band managers and groupies, and most importantly, musicians. What I love about this book is how brilliantly an oral history, straight from the horse's mouths, can capture culture. The book reads just like a script, it's like sitting in a group chat with artists just talking about their lives. And what resonates with me is that it's just a bunch of people who had absolutely nothing creating something. Author Legs McNeil is an American music journalist and one of the original founders of the New York magazine, Punk. Fun fact, it was this magazine that gave the movement its name. 
McNeil stated, we didn't want the book to be about punk. We wanted the book to be punk. And they definitely achieved this. The whole book is vivid, cheeky, chaotically bizarre, funny, sometimes gross, sometimes mean, and occasionally touching. It is a fascinating read, and one I recommend to any punk or music enthusiast. Written by Richard Platt and illustrated by Stephen Beastie, absolutely best cross-sections book ever is absolutely the best cross-sections book ever. I received this book as a child and I still look at it religiously to this day. Definitely my favourite book. It is a children's book that explores the innermost workings of an entire range of topics. Medieval castles, helicopters, man of warships, the human body, and my childhood favourite, an opera house. This is my favourite book because I'm quite a visual person and I love to go behind the scenes and find out how or why things are working or being made or created. I've always loved the intricate details of the illustrations. It's almost like a Where's Wally book with many teeny tiny characters going about their jobs in the drawn scenarios. Fun fact, it took over 16,000 hours of work for illustrator Stephen Beastie to complete this book. I mean, who doesn't love Where's Wally? Can you find him? Thanks for listening in and I hope you too can enjoy these books as much as I have. Bye.